Hello everybody and welcome to the bonus part of Let's Play Spyro 2 Ripto's Rage. Yes, it's a long time coming, but to be fair, I am very lazy. I am just so very lazy. But yes, today we're going to go ahead and get the remaining skill points that I neglected to pick up in the main game. So yeah, this is the easiest one to get really in Idle Springs. You just want to land on top of that idol. Yeah, kind of a pointless skill point, but that's what skill points are. They're pointless, but they're just there to show that you have mad skills in the game. So now we come to the first of the speedway skill point thingies. I have forgotten the name of this speedway. I just know that it's in the first hub world. But yes, right here, you want to get, well, beat the speedway in under a minute and 10 seconds. So yeah, the way I'm going about this I don't know, I mean, it doesn't seem to be the quickest strategy, but it was effective. Start off getting the boats that I charge to get the cars. And then as you're gonna see here, I'm gonna do like a little, like loop or whatever to get the rings and arches. Oh, and this is Metro Speedway, I believe. Metro Speedway, oh boy. And strange enough, it took me ages to actually get the time for this one. I don't know why, this one was just so hard for me. Harder than the remaining speedways. Either that or I guess I developed skills from spending so much time on this one. I'm not sure, it's kinda weird. Yep, there we go with two seconds to spare. It's pretty great. And now we come to one of the more tedious skill points. So here we are in Aquaria Towers, and for this one, you want to burn all the seaweed in the level. And yeah, well, all the skill points can be completed during the main game, but this one is a lot easier to do after you've beaten the game 100% and you have infinite super flame, because you can only destroy the seaweed with super flame. So normally you would have to kill as many enemies in the level as possible and then you know grab the temporary super flame power up and rush to find the nearest seaweed and yeah there's seaweed scattered across in the main part of the level and in the upper part too it's just long and tedious and that's why i sped this up because you don't want to see me just searching through aquaria towers for like hell how long did it take me to do this eight minutes yeah kind of messed up but yeah, while I'm going ahead and you know speeding this up, might as well just mention the speed po uh, speed points, skill points that won't be in this video. And I'll have links to the videos, individual videos where you can find them. Not so sure about the uh, time stamps for them though, because some of them are just like this, where it's just search the entire level for stuff. So uh, the first one that comes to mind is a skill point in Huracos, which you get for destroying all the windmills in the level. But yeah, I mean, I was just doing that willy nilly. Like it's, you know, just because they're there, they're destructible. And then there's two in Skelos Badlands, um, where, you know, the first one is to burn all the cactus in the level. So yeah, it's just like this. And the, um, then to kill these four cat bats that are sort of like beyond the goal. But because I was like a perfectionist and, you know, just a completionist throughout the game, I got that normally because I kill all the enemies in a given level. I just do. So, yeah, getting rid of those cat bats, like those four cat bats at that little area, cir circular area. Yeah, that was easy stuff. And then the final skill point, getting a perfect score in the hockey game in Colossus. I'm still shocked I got that one because I remember that skill point in particular giving me a really hard time as a kid. But, hey, I'm, I managed to do it like with no problem whatsoever. So, hey, all's well that ends well, I guess. And we have defeated the last of the seaweed. Can you really defeat seaweed? I don't know. All right, so here we are with the next skill point, defeating a crush without taking any damage. Yeah, this was so cheap on my end, but I don't care because the super flame just makes this trivial. 
I, mean, I almost did it during the main game, but yeah, I kind of screwed up here and there. But at least there's still some dodging involved because, yeah, while your Super Flame is all powerful, it can't shoot through his little barrier. Unless you try to jump and aim over the barrier. Yeah, this is easy enough, easy enough. If I was actually smart and aimed as he was running from circle to circle or rune to rune or whatever those things on the ground are, this would have gone by a lot quicker. But hey, at least I managed to do it in the long run, eh? Things were getting a little dicey though. I was kind of scared at that point. I thought I was done for. Shouldn't have taken me this long to beat him though. I'm still kind of disappointed about that, but hey, I just wanted to be careful. And he still chases you down, but that's simple enough to get away from you. Just keep running. And don't stop running. No matter what they try to tell you. Yeah, I should have been using triangle to aim at him as he was running, but eh. At least I managed in the long run. Just one more hit. And wow, that was easy. And with that, we have bested Crush. Like I said, I know it's cheap to use the Super Flame for that, but hey, I mean, the game gave it to me, so it's not like I'm cheating. Alright, so here we are in Icy Speedway, and for this, you want to beat this in under a minute 15. Yeah, they give you five extra seconds for this one. Once again, this is another one where I don't think I took the recommended path, but it really worked out in my favor. This was only my second attempt at it, too. Yeah, I started off with the Skydivers, got a few arches, then I'm just getting the Sea Serpents and the Skaters you know, as I come across them. Pretty much, I was just like circling around the entire area, just grabbing everything as it came to my sights, and it worked. It worked. So yeah, if this wasn't the recommended path, it must have been pretty damn close, methinks. I don't know, I mean, I guess there were some instances where I could have shaved off a little more time. Hmm, seven seconds to spare. Oh, I, I guess that went well. I mean, it's better than with two seconds to spare. That's cutting it kind of close. So here we are in Fracture Hills. This one annoyed the crap out of me. And as you can see, I took care of all the uh, Earth Shapers. Earth Shakers? Earth Shaper? Whatever the hell they're called. Before I took care of this skill point. For this one, you want to make three complete laps on the supercharging course. And yes, you must go through the supercharge gate each time. This was so nerve wracking and so hard. My hand was hurting after this, but hey, I persevered and I managed to do it. I hate supercharging so much. But yeah, thankfully, like with Super Flame, you're easily capable of taking care of all the Earth Shapers. Either that or like if you're trying to do this normally, then I would suggest like doing the Hunter mission first to get rid of the Earth Shapers in there. And then just slowly knocking all the other ones into the lava so you can have a clean path. I was just so glad to be done with that. And then up next, we're in Scorch. This is another one of those uh, little search and destroy missions. Where with this one, you just want to hit every single tree in the level. Just knock down a coconut from each one. This is such a stupid skill point. It, it just really is. There's, there's no punchline there. This is just a stupid skill point. <laughs> I mean, how does this show you have skills in the game? You found trees and you hit them. But hey, I mean, skill points are just like achievements. They're meaningless, but damn it, do people want them? Do they want them bad? 
Yeah, at least with the stamp system on the Wii U, you know, those are things you can use on Miiverse. And even then, that's kind of pointless, too. I don't see people clamoring to be like, oh, hey, I got all the stamps. I'm going to post them all in this little Miiverse post. But uh, whatever, whatever. And then I believe there was just one more tree. Seriously, worst skill point ever. Then I guess I could have said the same about the seaweed. And the windmills. And the cacti. Whatever. Anyway, here we are in... Cannot remember the name of this speedway, or was this Metro Speedway? Can't remember, but in this speedway, you want to get a minute 15. This one took me a couple tries, but not as much as uh, the first speedway. And mainly, that was because I kept getting lost when going for the arches. I would just be, like, miss the goal by like two seconds or so as I was just struggling to figure out where the arches were. But at least I managed in the long run. And this one's simple enough. I mean, of course you're going to go for the birds and the bungee jumpers first. But then just figuring out like where the arches are and then how to get to these workers quickly. That's really the hard part. At least it sort of follows a somewhat linear path, but yeah, that's where I would always screw up. I would just keep going down straight down that path when I figured it was just best to like turn around and figure out where these were. And good thing I was supercharging because if I would have just stuck with the flying, I probably wouldn't have made it. But yes, there's that one. Barely beaten. And now we reach Crush's dungeon. Not, not Crush, but Gulp. Oh yeah, there's two skill points here. The first one, hit Ripto. So yeah, like your best bet is to either, like if you're trying to do this normally without Super Flame, you wanna aim one of those barrels like as you charge into it so it hits them. It's kind of tough, but yeah, it's really easy with Super Flame. And the second skill point is to, of course, beat Crush, I mean Gulp, damn it, without taking any damage. This was so utterly and ridiculously cheap, yet I have not a single regret. A lot easier to beat him with no damage than it is with uh, Crush. Well, if you have Super Flame, that is. Anyway, here we are in Canyon Speedway. With this one, you must beat it in under a minute and 10 seconds. I think I did fairly well with this one and following the path. I mean, there's really not much you can do that will change. Of course, the rams are going to be right there, and pretty much this is the same path that you would follow just beating the level normally. It really is, actually. The hardest part is in destroying the, uh, not, not destroying, but killing the vultures. Because that's where you're always going to lose a lot of time. Like, that's where I had a lot of trouble in the actual like main game those vultures and if I would have stuck with supercharging across that path I probably would have beaten this one fairly quickly and yeah, this is only like my third attempt at this one it wasn't that bad yep with seven seconds to spare really if I would have stayed supercharging and wasn't missing with some of those vultures I Probably could have had under a minute on that. Oh well, here we are at the final skill point. Beat Ripto without taking any damage. Now this will be incredibly hard without infinite super flame. So yeah, I have no qualms at all. Besides, the final part of this fight, you know, it doesn't change because you have super flame during that part of the fight anyway. So yeah, I, I just sped things along. Yeah, l l l let's go with that. Let's let's go with that. Although I believe this might have been my second attempt because I fell into the lava like a dumb person. Either that or I got hit and I just like, no, I'm fed up with this world. I must end it all. And I just flew into the lava. But yeah, it's always just like a big slap in the face when you're doing a uh, 
you know, beat a boss without taking any damage, and that boss has multiple forms, and you take damage on the final form. You know, so that's another reason why I don't have any qualms about using the Super Flame in this fight, just because of how hard it is to do this normally. And you all saw how things went during the main LP. I was getting destroyed by him. And I was not about to sit here and, like, just play this game for hours trying to do this. Because, hell, recording this took me an hour and a half. And it's condensed to about 16 minutes. <laughs> wow. And I was having a hard time hitting them, but that's pretty much the strategy you want to go with. Just fire wildly and pray that your shots get them. Like that. And Ripto has died again. Yep, see, he's been defeated. Again. Amazing, right? And then I skipped through that cutscene, but it's not really anything major. It's just showing you, like, yeah, you got all the skill points. And then that jewel goes into the guidebook and you're all happy and yeah. However, I did forget one thing and that's there is an epilogue that unlocks once you get all the skill points. All it does is just show you what happens to some of the people after you left. Uh, but when I was looking through the guidebook, I just figured, oh, that must be the final cutscenes and stuff from when we beat Ripto. But no, it's its own little thing. But yep, those are all the skill points. Complete. <laughs> well done. But all right, enough of this. Time to go to the epilogue. See you there. Gulp found a new life at the Society for the Protection of Abused Monsters Petting Zoo. Some of the Earth Shapers joined the Fawn Dance Troupe in Fracture Hills. One of Spyro's friends found a new toy. That doesn't really keep up with the series continuity, but yeah, well, well, whatever, we can roll with that. Hunter's scuba diving career got cut a little short. Yay. Moneybags swindled the Bone Builders one time too many. Agent Zero found some new recruits to train, but they are demon spawn children, so it's not like they need to be trained and whatever. The Ice Builders finally made it to Colossus for the big hockey game. The chef finally got to host a hot tub party. Well, okay. Spyro missed his chance with Alora. D didn't know there was a romance there, an interspecies romance between a fawn and a dragon. Uh, huh. Call me old-fashioned, but I'm kind of against that. I mean, fawns and dragons, no. Mammals should stay with mammals, and reptiles should stay with reptiles, damn it. But okay. Crush decided to pursue higher learning. You'll get there one day, Crush. Spyro was confronted by the black sheep of the herd. I see what they did there. Basil, the explorer's extinct creatures of Avalar. Faunus Mortis. Oh, okay, so they just had to throw Basil in there for, for some reason. Um, okay. Gardus Fatorum Catabatus. Oh, these are the extinct creatures. Okay. Catabatus. All right. Farme Robotum. Druidus Schnick Sh Schnickum. All right. Varmentum, Lizardum, Fat Slabe, Mr. Fistus, Armapillo, Nervous Tickus, Wuss, The End. Not the best epilogue out there, but hey, it's better than nothing. So with that, Spyro 2, Ripto's Rage, it's finally done. Thank you for watching, everybody, and see you for whenever. Spyro 3, the Year of the Dragon comes up. Will it be this week? Will it be next week? Will it be next month? Who knows? Well, we're, we're just going to see how my schedule goes. Uh, it, it might end up going up this month. You never know. But all right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. I did not mean to go over here. Whatever. Goodbye.